Today I just wanted to show you guys how to use Chorus Ensemble, the built-in Ableton effect, uh, and really just what it does and the different features of it. So if you guys do enjoy the content, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go ahead and check out Chorus Ensemble. All right, so I got this guitar loop pulled up here. It doesn't have any effects on it besides reverb, and uh, this is what that sounds like. To find Chorus Ensemble, go to Audio Effects, Pitch and Modulation, and it's right here. So let's go ahead and drag that on before the reverb. Now it's immediately going to pop up like this. Uh, but to kind of explain how Chorus Ensemble works, I'm going to work backwards from Vibrato. So with Vibrato selected, we've got these settings down here. Offset, Shape, uh, we have this filter which we can filter out the low end if you want. Filtering it out just makes it so the effect will not actually do anything to the low end. So we'll set it at about 200 hertz. So if we were to play this, this is what it would sound like. So it's making the pitch wobble in this shape of a sine wave at 90 hertz. Now if we slow this down, you'll hear that it'll change it. And you can make this effect way more subtle this way. The amount just controls how much it's going to affect the pitch. You can do like a really fast rate with a really low amount and it'll give you an effect like this. You still have this right here which will affect the shape in which the pitch is being affected. So if we turn this up, it'll slowly morph into a triangle from a sign. And you can do anywhere in between. Now where things get interesting is if we turn this offset up, it actually kind of sounds like a chorus. So if we turn it up to 90. Because now you have two different channels that are changing the pitch at different times. So, and if we actually flip back and forth between the vibrato and classic, they look exactly the same. However, they do sound different, so let me show you that. So they do sound different, even if you turn the dry wet up at 100% on the classic. There may be a way to match them, but I'm not 100% sure about that. To me, the classic mode sounds more lush, so there has to be other stuff going on in the background. But regardless, the same rate and amount applies here. But now we have this dry wet knob. Which can really come in handy. With the classic mode, we also have this feedback knob, which basically just does exactly what it sounds like. It feeds the channel back into itself. So if we turn that up, you can hear. Now we also uh, have this ensemble mode, which adds just another channel into the mix, which makes it sound even more lush. Same controls apply for this one. So with all these controls, you can get some really lush sounding guitars and synths and all kinds of stuff. Uh, actually, the last thing I do want to mention is we do have this warmth knob, which applies a filter and some minor distortion to it just to kind of make it sound um, more vintage and warm. So if I can show you what that sounds like here. doesn't do a whole lot, but you can hear some of the distortion it's adding. And then when it's all said and done, if you need to do any gain staging, you can use the output knob. Personally, I really love the vibrato in it. Uh, it's a nice thing to be able to have just built into Ableton that I can jump to. And uh, I use it on guitars and all that kind of stuff all the time. So it can kind of give you that RC20 vibe. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds in the mix. So 
so yeah, that's Chorus Ensemble. Um, I really think it's a great effect built into Ableton, and I just wanted to give it a shout out because I feel like people don't really talk about it too much, and I think it's great, and there's a lot of use cases for it. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you guys have a great day, and thank you for watching.